Hello. Um, you might be wondering what the hell I mean by economic genocide in Australia, question mark. Um, it's something I believe is happening right now in front of our very eyes and has happened for some years now. Some years ago, a knowledgeable chap acquainted me with the idea of economic genocide in terms of the fact that in the 50s and 60s, um, people had large families. It was difficult and they paid their houses off, put food on the table and did all the things family people need to do. It was difficult, but it was doable. And now, uh, if you fast forward into the 2000s, we have situations where, and have had for some years, where people are foregoing having children, getting on the uh, money-making gravy train and trying to save up a heap of dough and, and then having kids in their mid-30s or whatever, which is a sort of pretty much a reversal of the normal way people go about those sort of things. Now, increasingly, the ability to buy a house and pay it off uh, without too much massive difficulty is uh, not really a goer at the moment. Some people will never be able to own their own houses. In a country that's gifted with massive resources and billions of acres of land, um, home ownership and even a roof over the heads is out of the realms of possibility for many people. Um, recently, I've become pretty concerned about the state of affairs with uh, gas and electricity bills and power generation in this country. Now, uh, where the economic genocide business comes in is that like those families in the 50s and 60s who were able to raise their families, often under extreme difficulty, but was doable anyway, it's almost an impossibility now. Now, the reasons for this are multiple, but um, what you have is jobs going south, right? business and industry being offshore to overseas, um, affordability of housing is, is just an impossible thing. Our kids have no future. Right? They're... Um, I see the kids kicking the can around in the mall. All they're interested in is the, where their next can of coke is coming from and their next cigarette. Now, the economic genocide is happening on all these fronts, especially in the realm of business and industry and jobs. Um, in 2013, I came across a really interesting article by Adele Ferguson, who you all know from the Commonwealth Bank. Uh, exposes she did on Four Corners and um, else, uh, elsewhere. And um, at the same time, I came across a few other documents about power companies, about 457 visa rorts, immigration scandals, etc., etc. Now, in 2013, Adele wrote an article called Tax Man Wheels Acts on Small Business. It was uh, written for The Age, and she was uh, writing, actually, at the time for the Canberra Times, but being a Fairfax um, entity, the, the article ended up all over the place. Now, the first line of this article, and I'll show you the actual document, um, which I've printed off just to show you, so that you can get a bit interested and have a look at it in the links. There's Adele Ferguson, unimpeachable journalistic champion. Now, the first couple of pages, well, it only goes for a couple of pages, but August 9, 2013, and you have to, folks, you have to remember that this was just prior to the 2013 elections where Labor was in power and the Liberals were going to knock uh, Labor off, and they did. And at that time, when they were electioneering, they were all spouting that God-forsaken mantra of jobs, 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 jobs. Right? But in actual fact, what had happened was, and the first paragraph of Adele's article says, 
the Australian tax office has become the grim reaper of small business after statistics reveal it is nearly it is behind nearly half of the 1,365 companies that have been served with wind-up notices in the past three months. This is the three months leading up to August 9, 2013. She says, it is a scary trend that is expected to accelerate, according to one of the company's leading debt collection agencies, Pushka. Uh, she says that data crunched exclusively for Fairfax Media, and this was paid research done for Fairfax Media by a private research company, Data crunched exclusively for Fairfax Media shows that in July 2008, there were 184 wind-up applications served on companies and the ATO was behind 27% of them. Five years later, in July 2013, the ATO was behind 51% of an estimated 613 wind-up notices. When state government entities are added to the mix, the percentages of government-initiated wind-up notices has ballooned to more than 65%. Thank you, government. We are really, really grateful for you getting rid of all these small businesses, which are the biggest employers of people in the country. Good work, boys and girls. The big surprise, says Adele, is that banks are the small players in the wind-ups, representing less than 5%, and companies supplying services and, products, services and products are all big players. These are companies owed money for goods supplied. Prushka said, given the parlous state of the economy, all efforts should be made to work with struggling companies, which is something that the ATO does not do. Now, uh, what I'm going to tell you now is probably a really, really good reason why um, an inquiry, a Royal Commission like we're having to the banks at the moment, should be conducted into the activities of the ATO at that time and now because they're probably doing the same thing, laying waste to small businesses all over the country. Now, at the time the election was, was on in the wings, Labor and Liberals were all spruiking blah, 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 jobs, 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 jobs. The ATO wind-ups that happened in 2013 that Adele talks about happened under the auspices of the Labor government, the federal Labor government at the time, the incumbent government. Now, where were the Liberals saying, what's going on with this ATO winding up all these com uh, companies? What do you think you're doing? Now, this example will really ring bells for you because at that time I came across uh, a lady, I've known her for some time actually, in Perth who was a, um, an internet colleague and she told me that she had gone into bat for a friend of hers, a bloke who has a transport company in Perth and he had been saddled by the ATO, he came blazing in one day and said, you owe us $78,000 in unpaid taxes. Now, Donna went into bat for this guy, went through his books for three months unpaid, scoured right through the books with a fine tooth comb because she's capable of doing that, and got the debt down from $78,000 to $7,800 dollars. She told this to the tax department, and the tax department said, yep, okay, don't tell anyone, and off they went. So this man was rescued from a horrendous fate, probably a wind-up of his company and sale of all his uh, transport equipment, etc., etc. Now, that one single incident, because there were thousands of these companies wind up, and Prushka says in the article that Adele wrote that once a company's wound up, that's it, end of story. Never going to be resurrected. Never going to be a phoenix rising from the ashes. Now, if that in instance of Donna and this fellow's transport company is not grounds for a royal commission into the activities of the ATO, then I don't know what is because 
how many other instances have there been of the tax office barging in like a bunch of vigilantes and laying waste to companies uh, and bosses who may not have any way or knowledge of how to defend themselves against these accusations. Now, Adele's article says that um, uh, the tax office was chasing people who couldn't pay, wouldn't pay, this, that, or any other thing, but we don't know how many instances of foul play on the, on the part of the tax man happen. So an inquiry needs to happen. Right, one instance of economic genocide. Power bills, right? This is my uh, pet hate at the moment. Some 32,000 homes in Victoria have been cut off for inability to pay their electricity bills. It's getting to the stage now where businesses are going to have to wind up because they can't afford to pay their gas and electricity bills. Now, constitutionally, the government, both state and federal, have a uh, well, people call it a mandate, but the mandate is not really what they have. They have a constitutional contract to um, deliver peace, order and good government for the people of Australia. The constitution is a contract between the people of the country and those who would uh, seek to govern us. If they don't fulfil that contract, they're in breach of contract and out of order. Now, I've had a couple of letters published about the power bills lately and I've said that um, if the governments are going to stand by, and mind you, 30 something thousand homes have been disconnected in Victoria, uh, last I saw. Now, how can a government stand by and watch businesses going down the tube because they can't afford to pay their power bills, especially when government has told us that, oh, we need to privatise the utilities to um, uh, bring prices down and make competition more effective and prices will go down. But in actual fact, prices have gone through the roof. Uh, the latest one today is um, an article I saw in The Age about um, Infrastructure Australia um, championing the cause of uh, privatising all water utilities in Australia because um, uh, stress of population growth and uh, failure to ma maintain infrastructure is just too much of a cost burden and you know we're going to have to bump prices up and you're going to be paying two and a half thousand dollars a year for your uh, water when you're only paying a, maybe a few hundred this, uh, at the moment. Now one of the interesting things about water infrastructure is a, a friend of mine, <laughs> this is an amazing story, uh, four or five years ago there was a big rain event in Geelong and the area that this lady lives in, which is up above the eastern beach, so east of the, just east of the CBD, got really flooded and the water didn't go away. And in that area, <laughs> all these old dears, right, elderly ladies who had to go miles around the walk, a horribly long way around where the water was in order to get down to the shops and go and do the shopping and whatever. And my friend Jenny uh, rang the council and said, what's going on here? What's, uh, why isn't this flood water going away? Council offloaded the problem to the local water authority and Jenny duly rang them. She's pretty much of a demon. And said, well, you know, the storm water's not going away. What's wrong here? And, and the, the water authority said, well, no, sorry, we don't do um, storm water. We do water in and sewage out. That's all we do. Council's responsible for the storm water. Now, it turns out, and I don't know how she found this out, that the council, Geelong City Council, had not in... 123 years done any major stormwater works upgrades or refurbishment of the stormwater uh, facilities in that area for 123 years. Now in terms of the water bills uh, being predicted to go up by Infrastructure Australia, um, how can it be that they take all this money, all this tax 
da 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 state governments, uh, federal governments, water authorities, councils, and don't upgrade any of the infrastructure. It's all been bought and paid for years and years and years ago. It shouldn't be in decline because it should have been maintained. You don't um, fail to maintain your car, give it a grease and oil change every 20 years because the thing had fallen to bits. Now, economic genocide has to do with the loss of jobs, loss of industry, massive amounts of people on the dole and probably um, never ever going to have a job. If power prices are unaffordable, then that means we all live in the dark when we go back to the Stone Age. And uh, even the renewable things are a bit of a furphy because the last I researched was that um, uh, some 1600 coal fired power stations are being built around Australia largely uh, around the world, sorry, largely to be fueled by Australian coal. And a program I saw on the ABC, uh, one of the catalyst shows or something there uh, four or five years ago, uh, we're doing an, a, an item on pollution from the coal trucks in Newcastle, making people who live by the railway tracks crook. Now, they said that 7,000 trucks of coal were going through Newcastle every day to be exported overseas. And we're being taken back to the Stone Age and this push for renewables, but our governments are happy to make massive profits and loads of money from the sale of coal to overseas countries, India, China, etc., 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 returning none of that capital back to the, the people of Australia and sending us into the Stone Ages where the lights won't go and the aircon won't work in summer because we can't generate enough power. Bit of a nonsense talking about sustainability when uh, carbon uh, pollution is a fair fee and climate change is a nonsense. And when other countries around the world can have masses and masses of um, uh, coal fired power stations, but we can't, but we can supply the coal. Um, one of the things about the power companies you'll find is that um, there's a bit of a scam going on there. They're majority Chinese owned. Now, in 2013, June 2013, uh, a few months before Adele's article appeared, I came across this article. Power companies owe ATO $750 million in unpaid taxes. Right. There's the article, I printed that one off. Getting a bit short of ink in the printer. Uh, the links will all be on the on the page when you view this on YouTube. Uh, this happened at a time when a major bushfire occurred because an unmaintained asset out in the country, I think it was around Marysville, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, this unmaintained asset a power pole with a faulty insulator or whatever, sparked this bushfire that killed 170 Victorian people, including the beloved Brian Naylor, the newsreader that everyone's so familiar with. Now, uh, the ATO debt was just an accusation. I don't know whether that accusation was founded, but it's a huge amount of money. And you have, you have to realise that this amount of money is on top of their profits that they've already made and on top of incomings that they have already. So that $750 million could have been chucked on the overnight money market or used to um, uh, generate even more credit so these Chinese companies could go up buying everything left, right and centre that they could possibly get their hands on. Um, now, some time later, I don't know how much later, um, uh, the ATO settled the debt for $80 million, I think it was. Now, one of the things that happens, and this is another drastically unfair thing, is that these Chinese companies might be sitting on a lot of un a lot more unpaid tax now. This is um, four years down the track. Now, what happens with 
a lot of people is that they are direct debited every fortnight. Now, in Geelong, there are 67,000 people on Centrelink benefits, over a quarter of the population. Now, I guarantee most of these people will be um, paying or being direct debited uh, fortnightly because their income comes in fortnightly. Uh, I pay 30 bucks a fortnight. I'm an all-electric uh, housing commission household and uh, some of the other people here in this 16 unit block pay 50 bucks, 60 bucks, um, all sorts of different amounts to whoever, whichever provider they're with. Now, um, I think there's a bit of a rort in this because if uh, a power company has a million customers paying a fortnightly direct debit of say $60, at $60 million they have on hand every second week. And that uh, money can be used once again to uh, invest. Overnight money market's a good one, that's a big earner. Or to generate credit so that these companies can go out buying up things left, right and centre. Now, if that's the case, and this money can be used for those purposes, if that's the case, then power prices should be on the way down. The power prices are a nonsense anyway, because uh, some joker will come along and say from another power company and say, well, we'll give you a 30% discount if you um, sign up with us. And the question remains is, 30% discount on what? If you can give me a 30% discount on my bill, then obviously you're charging too much or you're quoting me a nonsensical figure. Now, no government department has come out and said uh, or, or divulged the correct price of uh, electricity. It fluctuates all the time depending on demand, but the trouble is the regulatory authorities are not actually government. They're private entities separate from government, incorporated entities that cannot enforce any law. Um, now, the other thing is that governments are often shareholders in these companies. There's a link there to Clint Richardson's article about uh, the biggest game in town, which is the big scam involving the use of monies paid into the various levels of government in America and about the fact that governments on the three different levels, local, state and federal, have become the biggest shareholders and virtual owners of most of the corporations in America. Now, if it can be proven that governments both state and federal and local, well, local government's not real government anyway, it's a, it's a furphy. If these government, uh, federal and state governments have shareholdings in these utilities, the gas and power, and uh, if you look at the entity type list, you'll see all sorts of government investment arms, then they're perpetrating a wrongdoing because they are uh, allowing the prices of commodities like gas and power to rise in order to make profits for themselves. That's like really dirty pool and that's um, not really in keeping with their contractual arrangement for peace, order and good government. So all of these things conspire to make life more difficult, to impoverish us, 30,000 people in Victoria, families or households haven't got any electricity and probably not any gas. So what are they going to do in winter when it's when it's cold and summer when it's too hot? They can't all go to the local library and sit in the aircon like we do here. This is, I don't want to quote too many examples because um, I don't want to sound like a rabid uh, right wing anything or um, you know a rabid loony of any sort but these are actual facts so you need to acquaint yourself with the facts 
have a look at the links. I won't put too many there, uh, but there'll be a couple of video links and a few documents that you can read. Clint Richardson's really good. Um, Adele's link will be there and the power company's link will be there. Um, you really need to do your own research, but what is happening is we are being sent to the poorhouse as a nation. And it's even more extraordinary because, um, especially in terms of the water infrastructure, they're saying, well, that increasing populations are, um, you know, putting stresses on the, uh, on the uh, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if that's the case, then why are we taking in so many immigrants? No, there are reasons for it, but I can't go into it here. So there is a totally warped and bizarre situation in this country. The public debate, the media are telling a lot of lies. ABC News is just a propaganda arm for the government and governments in this country are totally out of order. They are impoverishing and, uh, well, just impoverishing everybody. And if our businesses, our bakeries and factories can't afford to pay their bills, their power bills, then the power bills are too high and it's a good reason for the utilities to be nationalised again because they are actually owned by the people. They should never have been sold uh, because they were sold on the pretext of prices going down and that's not what's happened and it never will. Clint Richardson will tell you about that. It's a long read, but read it anyway, because you'll learn a lot. Um, so I hope I haven't raved on too much, but this is a very serious issue. There is an economic genocide going on in Australia. What happens when, what, what happens when all the business people end up on the dole too? Are we a welfare nation? What, we're not going anywhere in that sense. Um, we need to be producing goods that uh, are um, exportable to get um, export income. These governments are sick, absolutely sick. But I'm going to leave it at that, right? There's an economic genocide happening. When you get acquainted with this um, and the idea of it, you'll see it plainly yourself. I'm just bringing you the message. I hope you receive it uh, properly. So. I'll sign off now because I've been going for nearly half an hour, but really, really consider this seriously. It's not good enough to say she'll be right or that's the way it's going because the way it's going is not good for you and me or anybody else. We need a future in this country, not a miserable present. This country is so rich in resources, everyone should be wealthy and we should be... Um, capitalising on the resources that we have and enriching our people rather than impoverishing them. We have shale oil reserves around Cuba PD, which when it's feasible and economic to extract those reserves, and they will because they won't just leave it in the ground, we'll have the largest oil resources in the world. We should be a very rich country, but we're going exactly the other way. So. Get savvy to all these folks and get onto it and rattle the chains of your local members or better still, if they're not doing the right thing, vote them out of office because we need people of good heart and decent intent in our parliament, not these ratbags that we have here at the moment because they're all treasonous, I reckon. So we'll sign off and um, hopefully um, We'll get some good results from for the country in the future because we really need to take stock of uh, what's happening in this country and reverse what's happening so that it's all good again. Uh, we'll do a MAGA, make America great again. We'll make Australia great again. Okay, let's get to it. All hands on deck. See you.